Hey, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory and worship to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rochach, Kodash, the honors to the elders and the apostles that have well and do well, uh, that oversee the tabernacle of David. All right, of course, starting from Prophet Abba Bivens on down to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you, Akim, that are pushing the word in truth and sincerity, which are the 144K. <sighs> then that do not delay. All right. This is your brother Yaikwa out of the command of a great millstone Atlanta church with a lesson um, concerning, you know, the matter that this is our time. You know, that the, uh, the apex of um, Esau's kingdom has come. And gone, and he is on the rapid, abrupt decline. And now, as it is written in the book of Second Ezra, chapter six, and verse nine, it says, "For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow." Meaning, after the fall of this this empire and this power structure that the so-called white race has established, the Israelites are going to establish the kingdom of heaven. All right? And, you know, this is biblical prophecy, and we shouldn't fear these, you know, we shouldn't fear, um, we sh really shouldn't fear anything, you know, because we have the heavens on our side, and we have God on our side, we have Yahweh Bashim Yahushai on our side. It's inevitable that we're going to win. It's not a question about it. All right, but what we must do individually is, you know, keep the faith and not fear man, but fear God. Fear Yahweh Shem Shah, His Majesty. All right. Okay, that He may fight for us and support us in in our times of trouble, and grant us that that um that penny. All right, and that position in His kingdom that we are uh, that we are all diligently seeking for. All right, so um, let's get right into the scriptures. So this is uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out. Right, so the Lord's going to have mercy on us, and he's going to get those who are driven out. We're, we're, where were we driven out? We were driven out of the land of Israel, all right, starting from the northern kingdom, which were conquered by the Syrians and pushed out of Israel, all right, on down to the tribes, the southern kingdom, which ultimately were exp um, expelled from the Holy Land in 70 A.D., all right, but the Lord is about to have the Lord is having mercy on mercy and compassion on us, uh, and making His promise sure, His promise sure that He made with our forefathers. All right, so we're about to be we're about to be able to receive an abundance of mercy, grace, health, you know, true love, you know, and happiness and joy. All right, that's. That's what is before us, gentlemen. But we must go through that straight and narrow in order to enter into those gates and to enter into the chambers. All right. It's a certain process and steps we have to enact in order to be uh, worthy, you know. So um, let's get a... Bam. All right, let's get um, Job. All right. We got a few precepts. And these precepts that I have, this list that I've, um, that I'm about to, basically the precepts that I'm about to bring out for the most part, it was basically a, a, a spiritual cipher that brothers were, you know, doing in our, in our group text where brothers were, you know, just, Posting beautiful um, scriptures. 
post, posting beautiful scriptures. She like it. Brothers were posting beautiful scriptures that uh, align, uh, you know, truly oriented around, you know, what I'm doing this lesson on, which is basically this is our time. And likewise, having no fear. All right. No fear. Fearless. All right. It's Job chapter 5, verse 19. It says, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, which is the six plagues. All right. It says, yeah, in the seven, there shall no evil touch thee. Right. So in that seven, which is those missiles and, you know, these final plagues that are, going to, that are falling upon the earth, that we're not going to be taken in them. We're going to be delivered and um, our soul is going to be satiated. All right, um, let's get a, this is um, the book of, um, excuse me, I'm going to continue in this. It says, verse 20, it says, in famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Call the Lord in Yehah by Shem You know, verse 21, it says, thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Right. You know, and it's, we're not, it's not a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a lot going on right now. But, you know, the times that are about to commence is going to be a lot more serious, a lot more, you know, you know when the actual famine actually hits, when the actual mark of the beast actually hits, when the actual, you know, uh, plagues and pestilence are actually in the streets and, and people are starving and don't have any, you know, when everything is really being manifest in completion, you understand, we're going to be confident. We're going to be, you know, we're going to have faith, you know, and you have Hashem Yahushai, right? And we're not going to be distressed, you know? So um, let's get... um. I got it's, I could keep going on this. This is definitely something brothers should read, but I'm gonna get another precept actually. I'm sorry, I had a list of precepts that I wanted to bring out. Alright, this is Psalms chapter thirty three. Psalms chapter thirty three, verse eighteen. And it reads, it says, Behold, the eye of Yahweh is upon them that fear him. Right. So we're supposed to fear Yahweh by Shem Alright, and when I say no fear, that's talk that, that no fear is speaking that of having no fear of Esau Edom and, and no fear of this world, this society. But you are supposed to have fear in Yahweh by Shem Alright, you know, we must have a good, healthy fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahshua in order to come up on the level, man. In order for him to um deliver us. Because if you don't fear Yahweh by Shem Yahshua, then <laughs> you're just going to be humbled. And, 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 you're, and the act of you being humble can quite possibly come by a terrible death, man. All right, so it's good and healthy to fear you by Shem Yahushua because when you fear him, you make proper decisions. You make good decisions, you know, good, smart decisions, all right, healthy decisions. And that's what we're trying to do, and that's what we must do in order to be um, saved, okay? Let's uh, get um, Sirach. Sirach. All right, in the park for Ecclesiasticus. Thirty four. Twelve. It says, I was oftentimes in danger of death, yet I was delivered because of these things. The spirit of those that fear. Mm. Wow, come on. Man. I'm going to have to read that from the top. 
It says, I was oftentimes in danger of death. Yet I was delivered because of these things. Listen closely. It says, the spirit of those that fear Yahweh, Bahashim Yahusha, shall live. This is the key to life. This is the passport to perpetual happiness, joy, peace, longevity, escaping death is through the fear of the Lord. It says, for their hope is in him that save of them. Right. I hope, you know, brothers might, you know, okay, you have to understand. All right. Yeah, we're about to go into perilous times. The stock market is about to crash, this and that. All right. Yeah. You go, you, you know, you make sure you have, you know, some water at your house. You know, if you got a fireplace, maybe some wood to keep warm. But are you trusting in that? Is that what you put your faith in? Esau, Edom, you know, is, um, he's, he offers condiments, all right, and he's going to offer certain things to satiate you in the time of trouble. Is, is that where you put your faith? You have a gun. You got a couple clips. Is that where you put your faith? Is that where you put your hope? That's not going to save you, man. I don't care, you know, you know what scenario you are in. These, those things are not going to save you. You need Yahweh by Shemiah with Shai, all right, in order to deliver you from um, the wicked and from these plagues, man. These these spirits, apparitions. It's so much. It's so many things that's going about to fall upon the earth, and a lot of them are already being manifest. You know, but it's gonna it's gonna come to here to the United States of America. All right, and these people, a lot of these people, are gonna be caught unaware because why? They're proud. They're they're extremely proud, so they can't receive, you know, spiritual meat. Because they're carnal brute beasts and they can only uh, eat the physical, not the spiritual. You know, they can't eat of Yahushua's body. They're offended. You know, and because of that, they're going to die. They're not going to make it. You're not, if you're out the fear of the Lord, you're not going to make it. That's just straight up and down. Verse 14 says, Whoso fear of Yahweh shall not fear nor be afraid. See, that's what I was um, bringing out earlier, basically. That, that, matter of fact, that scripture actually embodies what I was speaking of. It said, Whoso feareth Yahweh shall not fear nor be afraid. So if you fear Yahweh, you're not going to fear death. You're not going to fear the persecution by the wicked. Basically, what it's saying is you're going to fear something or somebody. But who are you fearing? Do you have fear for God or do you have fear for man? You know, where's your faith? These things, these are things we must be asking in these times that we are coming into, man. All right, because it's it's, it's necessary that we uh, that we've addressed these things before um, we actually have to utilize them, <laughs> if I may say that. All right. So um, let's grab some more scriptures. Yeah, a lot of these, I could just keep going on in those chapters, but I want to grab some more scriptures. Um, let's see here. Bear with me. Bear with me, Sirach chapter 33. Sirach chapter 33, verse 1. It says, There shall no evil happen unto him that feareth Yahweh, but in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. Right. So, if you got fear for Yahweh, Shimei, 
And if you fear him, what does that mean? That means you're going to be keeping his commandments. You're going to be loving your brother or your sister as you love yourself. You know, as a woman, you're going to what? Play your role in the house. Follow, you know, listen to your head. Not be a, a brute beast and loud mouth in the household. You know, raise your children up right with morals. If you're a man, you know, you fear the Lord by, you know, of course, like I said, keeping the commandments. You know, supporting for your family, for the for your family. You know, being there for the brotherhood. You know, doing the work. Going in the highways and byways. And the list can go on, but the point is, we have to be doing the will of the Heavenly Father, which who, whose name is Yahweh, son named Yahweh Shai. That has to be emph emphasized likewise, you know. But, um, mm, I'm going to read that from the top again real quick. It says, there shall no evil happen unto him that fear of Yahweh. But in temptation, and that what's that temptation? Ultimately going to, brothers know, the mark of the beast, the chaksai stigma, that degenerate piece of work, that, in, that work f f filled with inequity, charagma, the mark of the beast. That's terrible, man. We actually coming into that hour. It's so real. It's as if we were watching, as if you were watching a movie. But no, this is real time, baby. And the mark of the beast is right around the corner. But if you feel you have by Shema and Shah, the temptation because a lot of people are not gonna be able to eat. You know, gonna be very uncomfortable without having that chip, that mark of the beast. But hold fast, because the Lord will deliver you. You know, the Lord will will save His people. You know. He's going to save his people. All right. So, um, let's go to Sirach chapter 2. Mm, so can give me one second. All right. Let's do it. All right. Sirach chapter, um, What verse do I want it? Uh, let's do verse 10. It says, Look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in Yahweh and was confounded, or did any abide in his fear and was not forsaken? And what, excuse me, I'm going to read that again. Let me read that again. I misspoke a word. It says, look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in Yahweh and was confounded. Nope. It says, um, or did any abide in his fear? Abide in his fear. Okay. It says, and was forsaken. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? If calling upon the name of the Lord, you know, instance, but see, it has to, it, this is the key point. It has to be in sincerity and in truth in order for him to receive it. And as it is written, um, excuse me, let me see here. Uh, yep, yeah, as it is written, it says, it says, um, it says, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? So if you called upon Yahweh by Shemiah you're not going to be despised, man. If you do it in sincerity and in truth and you endure, the Lord, is, the Lord loves his people, man. And he's going to take care of us. We are the Lord's people, man. We are the children of Israel. The children of Israel. All right, we are God's chosen people. And he has always defended us, man. He defended us in the time of Pharaoh in Egypt. All right? He, he, he defended us in the time of, uh, 
in the time of um, when the uh, Assyrians seek to, when they when they seek to besiege Jerusalem with those eighty five one hundred and eighty five thousand troops, and they were completely annihilated in one in one night. When they woke up, the whole host was dead, dung upon the earth, because they was playing with the children of Yahshua. All right. Okay, in a plethora of other times, during the time of the Grecians, when that wicked degenerate Antiochus Epiph Epiphanes, that dirty bastard, when he tried to um, to Hellenize us and, and and exterminate us, those who were in Jerusalem, he gathered the host of those filthy heathens against us to try to put us to death. He was confounded, and he was ultimately put to death by Yahweh by Shemiah in a terrible, gruesome death. We don't fear these damn devils. We don't fear the devices of Satan. Yahweh by Shimei Shai is the king of king, lord of lords, man. Cannot be defeated, cannot be stopped. You know? That's our power. That's our lord. All right? So, um, let's, keep, let's continue. It says, verse 11, it says, for Yahweh is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering, and very pitiful, and very pitiful, and forgive of sins and save of in time of affliction. Yes, he does, man. He does it. He forgives of sins. And especially through Yahweh Shai. Now Yahweh Shai has come. Man, we, the odds are looking pretty good for us, Akim. It's looking pretty good. All right, because Yahweh Shah was made that 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 sacrifice. He was the Passover for us, mm -hmm. and we know what took place in Egypt with the Passover. Need I say more? Well, it's looking pretty good for us, Akim. All right, and we will not be destroyed nor diminished any longer. Now it is time for us to receive and establish the kingdom of. Pure glory that Yahweh Shimei Yahushai name is upon, and we are simply vessels of. <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and probably grab that. Um, verse twelve it says, "Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands," meaning if you got fear. Of these fucking Edomites or these heathens, or you got fear of some something of this world. Okay, it says woe, meaning destruction. All right, it says in faint hands. Faint hands meaning somebody, uh, somebody who has faint hands is is a slugger. All right, Lord doesn't deal with Lord doesn't like lazy activity. He doesn't like slugger slugger behavior. Lord is a man of war. A man of war is a man of what? Action, diligence, discipline, so on and so forth. All right. So um, let's see here. Um, it says, and the sinner that go of two ways, and that's dealing with a hypocrite. You know, that's why you you shouldn't want to be. A, you shouldn't be a hypocrite. You know, you not want to be a hypocrite. All right. Verse um, 13, it says, Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. It's plain and clear. If you don't believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh then he will not defend you. He will not defend you. If you don't have faith in him, you're not going to be defended. It's important for us to to really digest, you know, digest that point that if we do not believe in Yahweh Shimei and have faith in Him, then we will not be defended. All right, we have to believe that the Lord can do all. We can do all things uh, in the name of the Lord that, that strengthens us. All right, in the name of Yahweh Shah, that strengthens us. We must believe that. You know, we must believe that. All right. Mm. Verse 14, it says, Woe unto you that have lost patience. 
And what will you do when your Yahweh shall visit you? Oh, that's that's such a heavy scripture, man. It says, Woe to you that has lost patience, that that took his hand off the plow and stopped doing the work of the Heavenly Father. All right. That um, you know, compromised the truth and compromised the ministry, all right, for vain glory and, you know, um, temporal gain, so on and so forth, all right? He says, woe unto those people. It says, when Yahweh Shai come, when Grand Hefe Mashiach and his return, the long awaited, it says, you will not be defended. It says, I'm going to read that again. It says, and what will ye do when Yahweh shall visit you? What you going to do when the Lord visits you? Mm. You're not going to have any covering. You're not going to have any strength. You know? And so you're just going to be confounded, man, and laid waste. All right? It's uh, one more scripture. Let me see. Isaiah, the 59th chapter. We'll end it off from here. This is Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. And it reads, it says, um... So shall they fear the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua from the West, which we are in the West, and his glory from the rising of the sun, which is the East, because the sun rises in the East. It says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, and the enemy is talking about the different forces, spirits that Esau has conjured up, um, um, he's different, his robotic machinery and uh, um, weaponized material, so on and so forth. And everything, you know, that's adverse to the Heavenly Father. All right. You know, it says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, meaning coming in very powerfully and with an abundance of forces. And that's how they're going to come at the elect. That's how they're going to come at the Lord's people. That's how they're going to come at the Israelites. All right. But it is written, it says, it says the spirit, the Racha, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. So the Lord is going to lift up a standard against our enemies. They're going to be confounded. Confounded, and we are going to be delivered, and all of our enemies are going to be put in subjection underneath us. Thus said the Holy Bible. All right. So Lord's going to lift up a standard for His man and His woman and His children. All right. So, you brothers and sisters, you know y'all don't lose hope. You might, matter of fact, you better have hope because if you don't have hope, you're hopeless. We need each other to support each other and, you know, fight for each other, stand for each other, and if necessary, obviously die for each other. So I'm going to give all praises and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahusha, Bahashem Cha, Kodash, Shalom to you sincere laborers. Moath, Baba, Kwamba Chayayam.